King's Dominion is a large amusement park in Doswell, Virginia. This Cedar Fair owned property features arguably the best one two punch in the country with Twisted Timbers and Intimidator 305. Coaster enthusiasts understandably visit this park primarily for those two rides, but King's Dominion has so much more to offer from both an attraction and atmosphere standpoint. Find out why this is one of the most enjoyable Cedar Fair parks in this review. Taft Broadcasting opened King's Island in 1972. The park was so successful that they immediately wanted to build a second park elsewhere in the country. They targeted a large site near Richmond, Virginia and built King's Dominion, a massive 280 acre park with similar themes and rides as King's Island. Virginia received not one, but two major theme parks in 1975. King's Dominion officially opened in early May of that year, and just two weeks later, Busch Gardens Williamsburg opened roughly one hour south of them. These two parks have had to compete for the same market from day one. The proximity of these two parks does make it super convenient for coaster enthusiasts to pair both on a single road trip, so I don't mind one bit. In 1993, King's Dominion was purchased by Paramount, who immediately started adding attractions based on their popular movie IPs. During this time, the park became known as the launch capital of the world. From 1996 to 2006, King's Dominion added four different launch coasters. Ironically, their neighbor down south now has more launch coasters, and Busch Garden shows no signs of slowing down, with potentially two more on the way. In mid-2006, Cedar Fair purchased all the Paramount parks, and they've owned King's Dominion ever since. Cedar Fair has continued to invest in the park. They've made infrastructure improvements and add new attractions. The park is at the top of the Cedar Fair totem pole for investment, but is in that next tier. King's Dominion has gotten a few different roller coasters, the world's largest Snoopy-themed kitty area, and multiple water park expansions. There have been two downsides since Cedar Fair acquired Paramount. First, movie-themed rides were stripped of their IPs and given more generic names. Many of these attractions retain their theming at least. Second, this park has removed four different roller coasters. The most notable removals were two launch coasters. Volcano the Blast Coaster is arguably the park's most popular attraction, and I loved this ride. This unique intimate inverted launch coaster featured two punchy LIM launches, including one that shot guests out of a volcano. The ride then wound around the volcano through a series of hang time filled heartline rolls. This coaster was short, but was an incredible experience. The ride always had capacity and maintenance issues, but the latter became increasingly more common and expensive in its later years leading to its removal. I really hope this park is a worthy replacement in the coming years to fill the void. Hypersonic XLC had one of the most intense launches in the world. However, it was an extremely low capacity and unreliable attraction. Notice the theme? Cedar Fair put this ride up for sale less than one year after acquiring the park. I saw this attraction in my first visit to the park in 2006. After waiting two and a half hours for Volcano on my first day, I contemplated riding Hypersonic, but it has a similarly long line. I decided instead to save Hypersonic for day two. Unfortunately, it didn't open, so I missed out on that attraction. The two other coaster removals had much less fanfare. Shockwave was a Togo stand-up. I actually enjoyed this coaster for its forceful start and weird airtime-filled finale, but I know many found this ride uncomfortable. Hurler opened as a good wooden roller coaster. But in its final decade of operation, it was a shell of its former self between the trims and roughness. This one was converted by RMC into Twisted Timbers, which was a clear upgrade. One of the biggest benefits of the Cedar Fair ownership is the Platinum Pass shared between their properties. Single day tickets cost $75 at the gate as of 2022, but you can get $30 to $40 discounts if you buy them in advance online. I think King's Dominion is well worth that price point given its extensive ride lineup. You then also will have to pay $25 to park, but at least the lot is near the main entrance. The actual entrance isn't too grand, but the reveal of International Street is stunning. You have fountains in the center, quaint shops with the European architecture on the sides, and a one-third scale replica of the Eiffel Tower at the end. It's very similar to the front of King's Island if you're familiar with that park. The rest of the park looks similarly nice. This park is a lot of shade, particularly in the front half of the park. While King's Dominion doesn't have the theming of a Disney or SeaWorld park, care has gone into most areas. 
Planet Snoopy is a colorful kids area populated with the famous Peanuts characters. Old Virginia is a woodsy area with a rustic theme. The fact this area holds many of the park's oldest attractions fits the aesthetic. Candy Apple Grove is a more open area with similarities to the Coney Island area of King's Island. Except this one has more whimsical visuals, including the beloved singing mushrooms. These were returned for the 2014 season. There are a series of goofy statues that perform a musical number every 15 minutes. The final themed area is Jungle Expedition. Half of this area is rethemed for 2022, and that section looks great. This section is the park's most immersive area with the detailed buildings, thoughtfully themed rides, and music. However, this area is technically also home to Flight of Fear, Intimidator, and Backlot Stunt Coaster. Rides themed to Outer Space, NASCAR, and a bank heist don't quite tie into a safari area. These rides really feel like they're in their own separate sections because the jungle theming stops well before them. The overall park layout is also similar to King's Island. The park forms a giant circle with a pathway cutting through the center of the park. So it's pretty easy to navigate despite its size, especially because there are no hills. Operations are usually solid. Most coasters will be running multiple trains. Ironically, the one that most consistently runs just one is Intimidator 305, which is usually a walk-on anyway. It is incredibly rare for arguably the best ride in a park of this scale to almost never have a line, but that's just a normal day for I-305. This ride has good capacity, and quite a few people find this ride too intense. The one thing to beware on some of their top coasters is that you cannot store items on the ride platform, so if you have a bag, you're going to need to pay $2 to store it in a locker. As long as you avoid summer Saturdays or haunt weekends, lines are usually pretty short. The fast lanes skip the line past may be needed on summer Saturdays, and it likely will be needed on haunt weekends if you want to experience a lot. I specifically recommend Fastlane Plus so you get the park's biggest coasters included. They'll run you $65 to $80. King's Dominion can be done in a day. I recommend pulling into the parking lot 40 to 45 minutes before opening. The park routinely lets guests in a half hour early, and Dominator will usually be open, so you can get a few laps on that coaster to start the day. If you don't arrive before the official opening, you're better off returning to Dominator later in the day. There are four coasters you want to prioritize early in the day. These ones can get decent lines even on a quiet day, and brutal lines on a busy day. Three of them are in Jungle Expedition, and the other is Twisted Timbers. Since Twisted Timbers is in the very back of the park, I recommend knocking out those in Jungle Expedition first. Start with Toombili. It's the newest ride and has awful capacity. This SNS free spin only runs two trains, each seating eight riders and it isn't on fast lane either. I would then hit Reptilian because it's right next door. This is another one with relatively low capacity. It features two seven car trains. Each car can seat up to two riders, but you awkwardly need to sit in the lap of your partner, which leads to a lot of people riding individually hurting the capacity. Flight of Fear is just around the corner, so you should hit that launch coaster next. That ride has shockingly slow dispatches. Intimidator 305 is usually reliable, but it is an Intamin, so I don't blame you for grabbing a ride while you're there if you want to get on it to make sure. But if you want to beat the lines, the smarter thing is to hop on Backlot Stunt Coaster, and then head over to Twisted Timbers. The latter should still have a minimal to non-existent weight. If you started with Twisted Timbers instead, you probably were able to have a marathon. The one wrinkle is that the water slides may need to be experienced earlier on a hot summer day if you want to beat the crowds. I've never done Soak City, so I can't personally speak to how busy it typically gets. Moving on to the ride lineup, King's Dominion currently has 13 different roller coasters, including the epic top two. Intimidator 305 is an Intamin Giga Coaster, and it's one of the most intense coasters in the world. This ride features an incredible first drop full of ejector airtime before hugging the ground for most of the layout. You have several turns all pile on the positive G's and cause gray outs. Then you have some downright insane transitions. You are viciously snapped sideways, causing laterals and airtime simultaneously. Everyone talks about this ride's speed and intensity, but it's an underrated ride for airtime as well. This is a thrill seeker's dream. It's my favorite ride in the park, and I review covering it more. Twisted Timbers is the perfect complement. 
This RMC is all about ejector airtime. There are over 20 airtime moments. You have three awesome camelbacks with sustained ejector in the outward leg, plus many powerful pops of airtime in rapid fire succession. The ride also mixes in a few inversions, including that barrel roll down drop and the zero G roll towards the end that levitate you out of your seat. As I mentioned in a review, this is in the upper half of RMCs because of the quantity and quality of the airtime. The park is two large scale loopers. Dominator is the better of the two. This Balger Mabillard floorless coaster is relocated from Geauga Lake. I love the snappy first drop and gigantic vertical loop. The second half also has its moments with the airtime off the mid-course and the solid corkscrews. There are better floorless coasters out there, but this ride offers a different and complimentary ride experience to the top two in this park. Anaconda is an aging arrow looper. I love this ride's placement over the water especially since you dive below the surface at one point. The first two inversions have good positive G's, and the final two corkscrews offer a weird hang time because of how slowly you take them. But the middle section is brutal between the lack of speed and janky transitions. I wouldn't be surprised if this ride is on its last legs. Flight of Fear is a fun premier ride's indoor launch coaster. The LIM launch isn't too strong, but the first three inversions are super forceful and disorienting, especially because you're in near darkness. The mid-course does sap this ride at speed, but you regain enough to make that final corkscrew thrilling. Grizzly is my favorite wood coaster at the park. I would avoid a wheel seat or the back of a car if you can. If you do this, you'll get an enjoyable experience. This ride is a secluded setting in the woods and a fun layout mixing in airtime and laterals. I particularly love the bunny hill and tunnel after the first turnaround. Those are some underrated airtime pops. Racer 75 is a classic racing wood coaster. It got a lot of retracking recently, so it's running smoothly. But it just doesn't have much power to it. There's barely any airtime, and worse, if you go on a quiet day, only one side will be running. Toombeely is the park's newest coaster. I love how it was incorporated into the jungle expedition area. However, it is the weakest SNS free spin. This one not only has a smaller layout, but the Raven turns are trimmed, so it doesn't have the same pacing or intensity, as I mentioned in a review. You still do get a few flips at least. For family coasters, this park is a nice quartet. Reptilian is the lone mock bobsled coaster in the United States, and it is a weird paint scheme, but this ride is moderately enjoyable. It's not too wild, but it's not supposed to be, as I mentioned in my review. I particularly like those final two helixes once the ride builds up ahead of steam. Backlot Stunt Coaster is a well-themed family launch coaster. Not all the effects still work, but you do have some nice visuals passing cop cars and parking structures. The launches aren't too strong, but you have a few little pops of airtime and a shockingly forceful helix at the start. It looks unassuming, but it always causes me to gray out. Apple's Apple is a mock wild mouse. This one is a rarer layout with a large and zippy drop at the start. While none of the other drops are that good, the hairpin turns do deliver the strong laterals you'd expect from this genre. Woodstock Express is a classic junior wood coaster. It's the perfect bridge coaster for kids because it has a sea of hills, but moderate size and speed. Lastly, there's the Great Pumpkin Coaster for the smallest guests. This is a simple Myler Kitty Coaster, but it's off limits to adults unless you accompany a child. The best area for kids is easily plant Snoopy, this is one of the largest kids areas in the world. There are nearly two dozen rides here. Some are purely for kids. Others can comfortably accommodate whole families. Between the colorful rides and abundance of shade, this area is so well done. Kids could spend hours here, especially if they're Peanuts fans. For adult flats, King's Dominion has plenty of spinning rides scattered throughout the park. Then there are three modern flats I want to draw attention to. This park is an incredible drop tower named Drop Tower. This 305 foot or 93 meter tall drop tower offers great views and a long and forceful drop. You get a pure freefall sensation the whole way down with some nice floater airtime. You have another large tower attraction in Windseeker. If it's open, it's worth a spin to get the stunning aerial views of this park. You can see for miles because of how flat the surrounding area is. Delirium is a Mondial Frisbee. The max swings have nice floater airtime. 
I just wish this ride had a longer cycle. There are two notable observation rides as well. The Eiffel Tower is an amazing observation tower. It offers 360 degree views of the park and you can stay up there as long as you like. It is a photographer's dream. Then Blue Ridge Tollway is an antique car ride through the woods. It's a really cool setting for most of the season and then for Halloween it's transformed into a unique haunt experience. King's Dominion also has a year-round dark ride in Boo Blasters. The style isn't too ambitious as it's mostly filled with 2D sets, but almost all of them work and react in some way. This is a solid Sally shooter. For water rides, you have two scenic ones in the woods. That is the best feature for both Shenandoah Lumber Company Log Flume and the Whitewater Canyon Rapids ride. In the summer, you also have the Soak City Water Park. While I haven't visited it, the park appears to have a strong collection of speed slides, plus an average collection of tube slides, water play structures, and pools to appease all tastes. For food, I strongly recommend Grain and Grill on International Street. It's a newer eatery, but has some delicious entrees you typically don't get at a theme park, and it's all fresh and locally sourced too. I've only visited during spring and summer months, so I've never experienced their Haunt or Winterfest events. Cedar Fair haunts are typically decent, just know they can get busy, but it's the best time of year to get night rides on the park's coasters. Intimidator 305 and Grizzly are must once the sun goes down. Winterfest has a limited ride lineup, but it's a nice option for locals between some bonus coaster rides and the abundance of lights. So do I recommend King's Dominion? Absolutely. This is a great amusement park. Twisted Timbers and Intimidator 305 should be on every coaster enthusiast's bucket list. They are truly two of the world's best coasters. But you also have a decent and diverse cast of supporting rides. Beyond the attractions, I just think this park has a nice feel and lines are usually manageable. This is towards the middle of the pack for Cedar Fair parks, but that's more a testament to how strong the chain's top tier parks are. King's Dominion is still a park the chain should be proud of. I do think Busch Gardens Williamsburg is the state's best park, however I think King's Dominion has the two best coasters and is a better overall park for kids and families. So those are my thoughts on King's Dominion. What are your thoughts on the Cedar Fair Park? Let me know your thoughts about this place or any of the rides down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you consider subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.